Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. Got the light over here because it's raining outside, so I don't get to have that great ambient light that I always have from the sun. So if anyone wonders what type of lighting I use, it comes through the window. That's it. And it's usually pretty dark in here, at least to human eyes. So I'm pretty surprised this flip camera does as well as it does. So got the light going on, and uh, we're going to do uh, two episodes today. If you want one of these shirts, there'll be a link down below. Promo George in the house. Um, anyway... So uh, I've got two wines I'm going to do or record for today, but I'm doing one episode at a time like I always do. So today we are doing, um, this is going to be fun, and um, kind of, it's going to be fun to check this out. It is the 2004 Accordion Malbec. It is from the Mendoza region of Argentina. <clears throat> and um, $3.33 at the local Dons and Benz. We'll see. Now, I did some research, and there's, you know, more recent vintages, and um, some of them, some of the, the 2008s have been selling upwards of 14 bucks. No, maybe not 14 but a lot more expensive than $3.33. So, we'll check it out. Uh, Don's and Ben's is a local retailer here. Um, they're, they're more of the liquor store, and they have some wine there, but then they have another... Um, they have another set of stores called Gabriel's, and they, they focus a lot more on wine. So uh, we don't have any Gabriel's by our house, so the Dons and Benz was really just up the road. And um, let's check it out. So far, it doesn't smell too bad. Um, a little bit of spiciness on the nose. I said I'm supposed to smell some chocolate in there. Well, flavors of chocolate. Wild fruit and plum. We haven't got to the flavor part yet. But I smell some spice. And I smell some red fruits. Maybe not necessarily wild fruit or plum. But I do smell that type of stuff. It doesn't smell too bad. I mean, it's pretty, you know, for, <clears throat> for a wine that's not supposed to be really you know, stored for very long. This is a pretty old wine. It's a five-year-old wine. So, uh, let's, let's see how it tastes. It tastes old. Not in a bad way, but it tastes like there's some age to it, and, and maybe there should be, but I'm not getting chocolate. There is some fruit, but there's some some tartness to it, some earthiness to it. got some bitterness. It's definitely not a fruity wine, at least not at this point. Maybe maybe three or four years ago it was a lot fruitier. I've been avoiding saying it, but it um, has kind of an accordion case taste to it. There's, I mean, it, it, I, if you ever watched, uh, I did, uh, if you ever watched a, um, video I did, I think actually was an episode. No, it was just a, it was a little goof off. Uh, I was doing a tasting of, yeah, then I talked about accordion case dust. But it has this dustiness to it. Not unpleasant, mind you. Hmm. I'm a little confused because I was expecting a little bit different, so it doesn't taste like Malbec's I've had before, but it is, you know, near the end of what you should be drinking it. It's five years old. Um, who knows how it's been stored. Um, really can, I, I really don't know where to go with this as far as a score. Um, I don't dislike it. As a matter of fact, you know, I, I really do like it uh, because it's different. It has this unusual, it has an unusual uh, palette to it. it. 
The nose is really not much on the nose, so that that's really disturbing because I really like wines that I that I can pick up some good qualities off the, off the nose. Um, getting some more pepper out of it. It's opening up some more. You know, I could see this wine in, in two different classes of scores. I could see a general score that most how most people would, would react to it, and it probably wouldn't show very well for them. For me, it's it's a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> I can tell you that the only thing I could, only place I could find any type of actual score review was a um, a review from a seller tracker um, entry. Somebody put it put it in their seller tracker. They gave it a seventy six. The 2008 got an 88 points from a something called the Tasting Panel. I don't know who they are. Wine Spectator has has you know has some they they the website had some Wine Spectator Wine Spectator reviews but no scores. I'm gonna say for most people this is probably an 80 point wine, and it, and and I don't really want to give it an 80 point score. Just because I think, for me, I, I enjoy it. But I'm enjoying it because it's something a little different and it kind of caught me off guard. Um, and it's $3.33. So, I mean, come on. It's, for, for that much money, it's probably pretty good. But I can't see, I can't see giving it, uh, you know, an 85, 87, 88. I can't do that for, for most people. For me, it's a little bit more than 80 points. But we'll go with 80 points for the score. And, um, however... If you want to try something that's different and, and it's not going to kill you, you know, you can find a change in, in your cushions to buy this wine, go ahead and buy it. You, you might like it. It's not bad. Um, for three bucks, it's pretty darn good. I mean, I've had other wines that were three dollars or in that range that are about this level. And, you know, for three dollars, you can't go wrong. So, you know, you want to bring it to a party and somebody check it out. Now, I'm assuming that maybe the, 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 the um, later vintages, and those are the ones that are more expensive. They're probably better, and uh, so we'll go with that. I've already hit over the seven-minute mark, so let me run down this real quick. So it's from Mendoza region of Argentina. Um, the the, the um, producer of this wine, you may have seen the name a few times, and uh, <clears throat> you probably pronounce it Frigine, but it's not how it's pronounced. And I've known it's not pronounced Frigine, but... I, I actually didn't have a correct pronunciation. I, I've, I've always pronounced it uh, uh, frictionette, but it's actually um, freshinette. So, if, if you, because this, this is not a French word. This is actually, um, and I didn't know this, I thought it was just a Spanish word. It's, just, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Catalan word, or Catalan, Catalan? Catalonian. Okay. Um, the family is, uh, that started up this, that started up this uh, company. Their um, uh, what should we call it? Their first homestead in Spain, uh, the Ferrer family. This is um, what they called it, and the the name um, Freshinette means uh, what does it mean? I had it on here. Al means uh, ash tree grove in Catalan. So anyway, um, it's 100% stainless. He's a 2008 was 100% stainless ferment fermentation. 100% Malbec. Um, it's from the Finca Ferrer Estate in the Alto Valle de Uco uh, in Mendoza. It's three dollars thirty-three cents. Their vineyards are forty-one hundred feet up in the air. A lot of great copy. Made me think it was gonna be a lot better. Buy it. It's not bad. All right. So um, you want to tweet? You want to tweet me a T-shirt? Go see my boy Promo George. I'll have a link to below to where you can get the shirts from him. Um, it's a great little promotion thing. Uh, lots of people in San Antonio do it. Uh, <clears throat> friend me up on Twitter, Facebook. Click the links. Uh, you know, Check out the rest of the site. You've got a bunch of ads here. Maybe you'll find something you like from, from a wine shop. I um, think that's really about it. We get uh, ready to do the next episode. It's going to be this wine. Anyway, thanks for stopping in.